Um, yeah, we are here to talk to you about a lot of fun handcuff trickery today. I am Deviant from Tool. Along with me also from Tool is Dave Plochet, Dr. Tran, the Dashing Secret Agent. And as a special benefit, we also have Ray, one of our German friends from the sport picking groups overseas. Came, he came all the way from Germany. Let's give him a hand, guys. We have a lot of good things that we're going to show you, but especially, let's get right to our featured speaker first. <laughs> Okay, hi. I was asked to talk about a few things we did in Europe with handcuffs because there's somewhat difference there. One of the f most, I think, funny things actually happened last year at Haar because the Dutch police, which is the country where the Haar takes place, has a very special kind of handcuffs. This is completely different from all the cuffs you will find in the US and it has a special key. So it's shaped differently than all the keys you know. And they're very proud of that. And so they're carrying these around all the time and they were running around on the campground where we, all these hackers were. And one thing about the key is that they won't sell the handcuff to anybody. And as I collect sort of handcuffs, I don't really like that because they won't sell it to me, selling, ah, we can't sell it, the key is so secret. But they have hanging it on their belt. <laughs> the top secret key. And it hasn't changed for years, what I can say. So it's the same key, but it's just still considered secret until, until Har. So what we did is we used a 3D printer to replicate it. <laughs> Taking the measurements from a key we got somewhere. Printing it on our CD 3D printer and coming with a 3D printed key to Har. So as you saw on the previous slide, we approached the police guys there and like, oh, we printed your secret handcuff key. <laughs> Can we try it on your cuffs? <laughs> of course they were going, no, 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 this is a secret key, you don't have it. No, oh, we have it, so just try it out. No, no, no. Take it, this would go to your van and try it there. Don't tell us. And oh my god! Oh my god! Everybody! Does anybody have handcuffs? So you see, As you were saying. even the ninjas are afraid of the Dutch handcuffs. <laughs> okay, but the policemen were just afraid of our key, so they're running away. No, we don't take it, we won't try it. We said, you can have one, try it alone, don't tell us. We just wanted to n let you know that we did that, because your key is now public. But they didn't want to. Fortunately, later on, the older one wasn't there, the younger ones didn't know. <laughs> And we actually were able to try it. And surprisingly, it really worked. Woot! Yeah. So for all of those who ever are going to travel to a hacker camp in Holland or something, just download your copy of the key. Oops. At key.nu, with a dot after the E. So you can get an STL model there, you can get all the measurements from it, and you can print it on these 3D printers which are getting more and more popular. Yeah, so that's the thing about the, these Dutch keys. If you search on the internet for 3D printer handcuff key, you will find some, quite some coverage, some of them funny, some of them a little crazy. <laughs> Go search for it. So, another thing I'm currently working on, because this Dutch key is almost a year old, but this is not completely finished. Watch on Kinu for the final. We found out that there's actually an airline restraint kit featuring another very unusual cuff 
because it's using um, English cuff. It's called the Chub Detainer Cuff by the Chub Company. Lock pickers will know the Chub Company for high security locks, like in safes and everything. The handcuff isn't that high security, but still very, very hard to pick. You have to have real lock picking skills, three lever manipulation, and everything. But it's a very solid keyway. So I'm pretty sure we'll have a working model for that airline restraint kit in plastic. <laughs> <laughs> so you can go through the metal detector visit with any problems. So watch out on the door for these to appear. Yeah. Okay, another thing about the Dutch cuffs, if you happen to be there and don't have the key with you, we have a, last, a short video for you to see what else you can do with them if you have high-tech tools like, for example, paper with you. <laughs> So the paper basically blocks the mechanism and the cuff slide open. I have to warn you so that this won't work if it's correctly operated and double locked on both hands. So probably try to run away before both sides are double locked. <laughs> Well, that's an interesting fact, though. When uh, when people see that video, they usually say, "Oh, aren't those like, those big, heavily engineered handcuffs? How can you slip out of something with simple as paper?" Well, a lot of cuffs, actually, big, heavy-duty cuffs. Their security isn't in their anti-pick resistance or manipulation resistance, like these German cuffs by the Cluso company. They are really just designed to kind of almost be like leg irons and hand irons. They're not really designed to be unpickable cuffs. Many of you have seen these cuffs as well, by the way. How many, how many people have ever watched uh, you know, Firefly or seen Serenity? When River goes fucking nuts from the Odie Bar commercial, these are the cuffs they lock her up with on the ship, man. So you've all seen Clayuso Model 13s before. What you've probably never seen, though, is that same kind of a trick, that same sort of a shimming trick. You can do that on these. Again, similar cuff, big heavy cuff, but if you have something like a sticker... Do I have a sticker sitting up here? I do. Can you still hear me? So if you have, let's say, a, like a sticker paper backing, because that works well, dollar bills work well, sometimes that paper is just thin enough to slip in underneath the teeth here, but thick enough to still trip the levers. So if I can slip it under, or I just shred the paper. Yeah, let me just flip it around one last time. <laughs> Demo fail. If you have uh, dollar bills you don't mind shredding up, you can usually do it with that too. I don't know if you can see it, but... It works really well with European currency since they tend to be more plastic. Yeah, European currency, Australian currency especially. Have you ever tried to rip Australian currency in half? You actually can't do it. <laughs> yeah, it's like Tyvek. But a lot of those big cuffs, you know, they're also pickable. Someone will see the actual keys that come with them. They look real serious. But here's one of our locksmith buddies just popping open those same heavy-duty cuffs, and he's actually picking them at a tool meeting with something that's smaller than a regular handcuff key. So just because a, a cuff looks really big and angry or just because the key it comes with looks really huge, it doesn't mean that it's in any way really that pick-resistant. Well, let's talk more about uh, just typical cuffs, because we're throwing all these weird foreign cuffs at these people, and they may have never seen the inside of just regular cuffs before. Would you like to go over that? Absolutely. So uh, here we have a cutaway of a simple handcuff design. Um, this is the type that will be employed by uh, United States law enforcement. And uh, very, very straightforward. There are not a lot of complex moving parts. And again, as we'll talk further on, a uh, handcuff is not designed for to be a high security restraint. It's just designed to you know, keep someone situated while uh, pr particularly doing transport. Cool. Um, not many moving parts. You see you've got the ratcheting arm there in blue, and you've got the pawl at the bottom. Both of those have ridges that interlock with each other, and that just keeps it from moving in and out when you have the cuff in moving outwards, I should say. And then there's a spring that holds the pawl up so that it engages the ratcheting arm. There's also the double lock bar, and when that is engaged, you're not able to tighten the cuff or unlock it with the key unless you flip the key around the other way. One of the main purposes for that, for this, is to protect law enforcement from lawsuits and claims of abuse. Because if they, if you ever catch someone who doesn't double lock their cuff, 
um, if someone is you know a little crafty, what they might do is really slam that down, crunch it up, and you know get black and blues all over their arm and say, "Listen, I was being abused by this cop." Um, so that's the, the main purpose for that, and you'll see that very rarely will law enforcement officers not double lock a cuff. And that's really it. Just very straightforward. Not many moving parts again, and not not a complicated mechanism. Okay. We've got a couple of videos here. We're going to show you. Yeah, you can keep. It's it's what you've said. Yeah. You know, it's it's not a lot going on in there. Yeah, the mechanism itself is a real simple to understand thing. As you can you know visualize this, there's not much going on in the cuff. The parts that move don't move very far, and even getting the paw to trigger down, you're just talking about you know fractions of an inch worth of movement. So obviously there's a lot of ways you could reach in there without the proper key and still trigger this sort of movement. And hopefully if uh, you know we don't look too dumb up here, we're going to show you some of those ways. For example, like a shimming attack. Shimming is the use of really thin metal inserted somewhere into a lock mechanism. You can insert thin bits of metal in one side or another on the outer edge of the cuff body and still try to get at that paw. Now the side you just saw someone pushing on, that's hard to do unless you over tighten yourself. This side over here, it's easier to slip a shim underneath because the teeth are going the right way, but of course really tight cuffs, you're not always going to just get into that side. But almost, I'd say almost every cuff we have on this table, probably with the exception of some Korean ones, could be shimmed like that. And really quickly, just in case you didn't understand it, that double lock mechanism, that bar underneath here. Normally, it's out of the way, the key or a shim or a pick or any number of other things would allow the ratcheting paw arm to move, but if that bar clunks over, now nothing can move. The paw can't move, you can't shim it, you can't even use a key properly. The only way to get in, as Dave pointed out, is to bring a key around the other side. And if you see with our hands out of the way of this next shot, coming around the other way, click, will pop that double lock bar out. Of course, there are other ways of popping the double lock bar out, and uh, you know we're going to come back to that in a second. First, though, just so they know we're not completely uh, telling tales out of school here, should we try some shimming and, and picking attacks and the like? You guys want to see this? See us break out of handcuffs? First, we'll try to use some uh, some handcuff shims. Now, there are real, you know, proper shims like from Sear Pick and those guys, or you can just use tension tools and, and things like that and try to shim out. Should we do the video? No, we'll just yeah do it on camera here. So who's up first? Go. The dashing secret agent. Which, which mic? You just one? shout. You'll, you'll be heard. So for these handcuffs, I'm going down the side that has a split. So I'm st I, have a t I have a tension tool here, just from a lockpick set. I'm wedging it underneath the paw, if you can see. And I'm just pressing down. Power Bang. Cops. Bang. Yeah. Uh, I have some little more expensive cuffs here from the Smith Lesson Company using a very, very thin standard tensioning tool and I go to the side with the ratchets. So one thing you have to do when doing that is, is it feasible? Push in the ratchet a little with the, with the tool. So I'm pushing the, pushing the uh, bow in a little when putting in the shim. Then it gets between the ratchet and it open. Oop. Nice, very nice. I'm just going for the same thing Robert just did to reiterate and so you know there aren't any trick cuffs. Um, these, you just go in from the back here, push in down. This is a standard tension wrench. You can use any bent piece of metal, really. And then I'm just going to push down and it's open. So how about picking? Because we can pick out of these cuffs too, right? Yeah. Shall we show them some picking attacks as well? You guys want to see some picking attacks? Yeah, no, make it. Go ahead, doctor. What do you got there? Just a, just a regular pair of, uh, of valors. One way of telling which direction you need to pick is looking for the fulcrum where the paw is going to be uh, pivoting on. So you can actually see the rivet here, right on the handcuffs. So you know this paw is going to be flexing this way. So what you want to do is use your pick tool to just reach in there and just try to press down on the paw. 
don't do this with really nice picks, picks you just bought, let's say, because sometimes it'll it'll trash the pickup pretty good. We'll often see us, you know, we'll grab paper clips or safety pins. Those kind of things, you know, how many people have ever hated lock picking in the movies? Like when someone doesn't have a tension error, they're like, oh, look, the door fell open, and it's all fake. The cuffs, actually, sometimes in the movies, it is kind of like that. It's just, you know, a little shitty piece of metal. Picks are bad. Yeah, destroying the pick. That's all right. A little thin piece of metal in the 